the storm has gained strength. It just kept pounding and pounding and pounding. Houses knocked off the blocks. We have homes that's just splinters. Had two pine trees come in, go through the roof and the ceiling. I love Lake Charles, but oh God, I didn't had enough. It's life. That's it's life living here on the coast. Well, it's hard to believe it's already hurricane season with so many of our homes and businesses still scarred from 2020 storms. Here at KPLC, we evacuated and good thing we did as our TV tower crashed through the roof of our studio, but not everyone left the lake area. And we begin this year's special catching up with some of those that stayed through Hurricane Laura and find out if they would ride it out another storm. Thought, well, hey, it's just another hurricane. You know, it's not going to be better than Rita because nothing can compare to Rita. You know, well, unfortunately, I was wrong. Dari Morgan stayed in Lake Charles for Hurricane Laura. Our cameras found him the next morning after he crawled out of a closet where he stayed through the storm. The door blew open, the windows blew out the house. I was trying to hold the door shut. Well, I'm hearing all type of stuff and I start hearing roaring, like trains passing by and I was like, oh my God, I know the sound of that, that's tornadoes. So I dug deeper in the closet, grabbed some more clothes and put on top of me and I started praying. Lance Clifton spent the night of August 26th in Moss Bluff. Things, While KPLC there, was on the intact. air, he no, shared no his windows, experience is there with there any live that he said thank you. The, the most frightening time of my life, hands down. Uh, the only way, the only way I can describe what I heard is it sounded literally like demons were trying to rip through my roof. Another person we spoke with live on the air during Hurricane Laura was Buddy Russ. A hallway. The doors were starting to knock back and forth, and that was the wind creating that vacuum and pressure right. through all the for all their different bedrooms they had. So it was just like it was like the house was haunted at one point. We asked those who spoke what they do if another storm like Laura was headed our way. Load up the car, y'all. It's time to get out of here. Uh, Mr. Wayne says it's time to roll, so let's get out of here, y'all. I, I will not sit around again. Uh, Dad says he would. I would. I would ride it out with the old man one more time. Absolutely not. I've experienced it, and. That's good enough for me. One aspect of Laura that sent many packing was the projected catastrophic storm surge. And while that didn't come to fruition for some areas, Hurricane Laura did produce a 17 foot storm surge. For the people of Cameron Parish, the thought of another active hurricane season may not come as a surprise, but the damage left behind by Laura and Delta specifically from the storm surge has changed the area for a lifetime especially hardest hit Creole, Oak Grove, Rutherford Beach, and Grand Chenier. I estimate that the population of this area was probably pre-Laura around 600. Um, now we're probably looking at about half of that, somewhere in the 300 neighborhood. There are some encouraging signs though, as classes are in session at South Cameron High School, but the scars are ever present. The radius of maximum winds so wherever that made landfall is where the peak surge was. So that was right in the Creole, Oak Grove, Grand Chenier area. And uh, they got the, the highest storm surge and then it spreads out from there into the marsh. We were lucky in a sense that the marsh was dry for Laura uh, because if, it, if, if, if we'd had rainfall and the marsh was full, uh, it would have still been fairly bad up in, even up into Lake Charles. Which brings us to the question for those in Lake Charles who largely evacuated because of the dire predictions of a life-threatening storm surge. Bottom line, Lake Charles had a very high risk of major storm surge flooding had the track shifted a mere 20 miles west. Well, and see, and that's why we forecast it like that, because we know that small changes in the, in the track location are going to cause major differences in the storm surge. In a sense, the residents who have returned to Cameron Parish do feel forgotten, but that doesn't stop them from returning to the place they call home. This is their home, so they're going to try it one more time. It's, um, it gets difficult after a while. Um, since 2005, we've had Rita, we've had Ike, and then back to back we had Laura and Delta. Well, for those living in temporary housing situations, they're not quite sure what lies ahead this hurricane season. Jennifer Lott spoke to a few folks who were actually just living in vehicles just a few months ago. One dramatic hurricane season in the rear view, but another storm could be just around the corner. And hurricane victims agree. 
we don't know what we're in for. I think most people have a lot of fear. Uh, a lot of people still don't recover. People don't have bruises. People aren't back in their homes. People are still in campers, which is obviously not going to be a safe place if you have to evacuate. People like 93-year-old Christine Burke, who lived in her vehicle for several months after losing her house on Oakwood Drive. A home filled with five decades worth of memories inside. Gutted by Hurricane Laura. We had to start cleaning it out. There was a lot of buildup over time. And a roof has gone on, so now and we've got it cleaned out. And I think too, you know, people, it's daunting. People don't realize, like, they don't know where to start or they don't believe that it's really going to be fixed. Oh, uh, ain't, ain't no worries for it. Really, no worries for it. For others, like 77 year old Leanna Joseph, she says she lost a little hope before she was finally rescued from living in her car by community matriarch Becky Johnson. Joseph, not worried about the next hurricane season, says when you've lost everything, where do you go from there? There's nowhere to go. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it was, I was already down there, so it was nowhere to go but up, hopefully. Living with a chronic illness, Joseph says her health deteriorated while living in her car. She says doctors even recommended hospice care. They sent me home to die, put it like that. So my health is not really that good, and uh, but I'm still here. Believing she's already weathered the biggest storm of her lifetime. Hopefully I've gotten some uh, wisdom and a lot of patience. In fact, this has been really a, a, a patient thing. You know, patient, I, I didn't know I, I needed it, but evidently I did, and I was surprised at my own self that I, I could handle it. Still in temporary housing almost 10 months since the storm. They hope Mother Nature spares them next time. At your service, Jennifer Lott, KPLC 7 News. So many homeowners are still fighting with insurance companies or dealing with the rising cost of building materials. The thought of another storm has everyone on edge. Teresa Schmidt reports. Those who survived the damage and aftermath of Hurricane Laura have trouble thinking about hurricane season. The first time a meteorologist said next hurricane season, I literally flinched. Lake Charles resident Pierre Fontenot says he can't stand the thought of another hurricane. But you get this protracted battle with, with trying to fix things that weren't your fault in the first place. Calcasieu Emergency Director Dick Gremion admits no one wants to face another hurricane season, but he says we must prepare. People just don't want to talk about it, but realistically, you need to be making plans like you do each year. However, this year is a little different. We have some other things to think about. Such as what if you still don't have a new roof? Whereas you may have in the past not evacuated for a Category 1 or 2 hurricane, you really need to think that through this year because you need to decide can the rest of your roof sustain a hurricane like that. And if you live in a camper or RV while repairs are being made. We would recommend even in a tropical storm probably if you're living in a travel trailer you need to find another place to stay. Meanwhile. It was back to back hurricanes plus COVID and then we get the cold snap. It's like a pop 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 and it just doesn't seem fair. At your service, Teresa Schmidt, KPLC 7 News. Coming up next on Surviving the Storm, we catch up with some families we met just after the storm, and we also are going to explore the dangers of generators. We knew recovery was going to be challenging from all of the storms we dealt with in 2020, and just now some are beginning to get back on their feet. Ashley Joseph has this story of three local families. This is where my trailer sat, the trailer tongue, of course. Then it flipped on its side, and there it is. One week after Hurricane Laura, we met Mona Birdsong. It's gone. Everything. She and her family were living in a tent in her front yard, which would become home base for two months. It wasn't till Thanksgiving I got my home. Then the trailer hitch broke when they parked it. And I said, I didn't care. <laughs> With the help of her nephew, she was able to move into this single wide just in time for the holidays. I've just been blessed and I feel so bad. The ones that are still out there, I just 
would t let them know, don't give up. For Southwest Louisiana residents, it's been a journey filled with nonstop phone calls with insurance adjusters, FEMA representatives, and contractors. So since uh, you guys last came, uh, we have walls. For Jessica Walker, whose home was down to the bare studs after Hurricane Laura and Delta ripped through, Faith has led the way. I was told by my agent we were in her top 20, if not her top 10 of the most damaged homes in her office. Renovations have just begun on their home while the family of six waits it out in a camper. Even though the quarters are cramped uh, and there's six people in there, we make it work and we get to um, enjoy quite a lot of family time. It's a storyline that resonates with so many across the area. A couple rooms were gutted. They still don't have bedrooms. They're still sleeping on the floor and on the couch, but they like it. Jessica Foreman's family made the tough decision to relocate to Lake Charles after losing their home in Cameron Parish. We've been trying to buy it since February, so we just closed like two weeks ago on it. So the fact that we're not in a flood zone, the fact, you know, we don't have to worry. I mean, it could flood, but. Now, 10 months later, and the one thing that resonates among all three families, faith. It's what they've used to get through this last year and what they're taking into yet another hurricane season. Dozens of deaths occurred in Louisiana during the hurricanes, including nine in our area due to carbon monoxide poisoning. Madison Glazer spoke to someone on the safety aspects of using a generator after a hurricane. It was, it was a terrible feeling. Like I, I feel like I almost killed my family that day and it was you just don't bounce back something, something like that. Dalton Hyatt, Caitlin Coker, and their two children escaped at the last second after what they call a simple mistake. As they slept, fumes from the generator on their porch crept in through a tiny crack in the door. We got out just in time, they said, just in time. And it was all because I think, I say that God told my mom to keep calling me. Nine deaths here in southwest Louisiana were attributed to carbon monoxide poisoning following Hurricane Laura. A hurricane has passed, there's been a flood, there's been some storm. The last thing you're thinking about is that. The key, distance. Never put a generator inside your home or an attached garage. Keep it at least 20 feet away from windows or doors and always have carbon monoxide detectors in your home. We had firemen come and uh, install our smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, so it was done the right way. I can't think of anyone better than you know, our first responders setting them up. They are making the necessary preparations to ensure their family is safe. At your service, I'm Madison Glazier, KPLC 7 News. Coming up on Surviving the Storm, damage wasn't just to physical property, also to ecosystems, and we'll have a report on that coming up in just a few minutes. The Cameron Coast is scarred from storms, but just like structures that are slowly being rebuilt, so are the habitats of local wildlife. Jade Morrow has that story. Calm waves on a sunny day. It's hard to believe this is the same coast battered year after year by hurricanes. Anytime you have a major storm, it creates an incredible surge. Those, those beaches and those shorelines uh, take a beating. Uh, there's no question about it, and uh, every time that happens, those shorelines recede uh, even more than, than they were before. Combined with high winds, the storm surge can demolish nearly everything in its path, flattening homes and eroding beaches that serve to protect the marshes just beyond the shore. The wildlife that depended on those beaches that are displaced, uh, you have less surge protection for the next storm that comes around and, and all of that has a trickle down effect. Marshes fill the landscape of Louisiana's coast and when seawater is pushed inland, ecosystems are strained. Yeah, that can definitely um, be a problem at least for a while until it freshens again. But nature shows resilience. Often the vegetation will have a, a, an ability to grow back even if it's, you know, uh, temporarily destroyed. Like the people of Southwest Louisiana, they hope the wildlife will rebuild again. At your service, Jade Morrow, KPLC 7 News. 
Farther inland, we saw the same devastation to area trees. We spoke to the LSU Ag Center about the damage and where to go from there. Many of our trees were significantly damaged, if not lost entirely in the Hurricane Laura's 150 mile per hour winds, then Delta strike only a month later. I don't know of any tree that you can drive around that don't see limb hangers, some of them with major structure. Robert Turley is a horticulturist in Lake Charles with the LSU Ag Center. He says certain species of trees fared better than others. Some of the trees that we had problems with, we call them victim trees, is, is the water oak. A lot of limb damage, a lot of blowout, and you blow over them. Chinese elm tree, I, uh, had a big Chinese elm, just broke all to pieces. As many begin to replant, we asked, what trees will stand up best? Of course, our number one tree is always the live oak. It evolved here over, this, over the centuries uh, with, hur with hurricanes and storms. And what we get is the, we get these, what we call the flat top or the evangelin type. Live oak. Many lake area trees, including those sturdy live oaks, were ridden of their foliage, leaving some asking when or if they'd get their leaves back. Turley says most of the canopy should return in the coming years. Three weeks I saw crape myrtles already budding out. They were the first, and then later on all the other trees began to refoliating. All these trees shredded in the storm played a major role in the damage to some homes, something to keep in mind when replanting. Well, large trees. It doesn't matter storm or otherwise, shouldn't be planted any closer than 100 feet from any foundation or driveway. Even though there was extensive damage to trees across the area, there is hope that our once dense foliage will recover and grow. Coming up, there's more than just physical damage left behind after a hurricane. We take a look at the mental toll storms can take and how some locals are dealing with the stress. Reacting quickly during a storm and learning about what to do during the next storm is vital. Rania Kaur joins us from Lake Charles Memorial Hospital where they're doing just that. NICU nurse Rika Armentor remembers Hurricane Laura like it was yesterday. Definitely high anxiety and different type of nursing that we were used to. With 19 babies in their department, Armentor hoped Hurricane Laura would turn its path. As the day, uh, the morning progressed, you know, we got really scared when we were practicing situations of what are we gonna do if it gets so bad out here? Um, are we gonna get on the roof with these babies? How are we gonna get there? Um, our main goal was protecting them, taking the best care of them. With the predicted storm surge and high winds, management made a decision. That is when we got the word that we were going to transport all of our patients um, to the main campus across town. A nearly eight mile journey with wind speeds rapidly increasing. Everybody pulled through and just um, swarmed into the NICU and um, helped us just move all the babies because it was so critical and so important and we were losing time and we knew that. Ideally, uh, that should be done a little bit quicker. Scott Kyle, newly appointed director for emergency management, admits the decision wasn't made fast enough. The NICU is, is uh, the smallest, you know, with the, the, the little babies with the, the, uh, the biggest problems. So those are priority. Uh, we have state plans in place to move those, those babies quickly and get them out of harm's way. While the babies were moved successfully to the pediatric ward of the main campus, the department learned from the storm. Any given day, we're required to keep 96 hours of supplies to be self-sufficient, whether it's food, water. It's the lesson they learned during Hurricane Laura that allowed them to keep water running during the freeze. Water was a big issue after the hurricanes. We had contracts in place, which uh, most hospitals do, but uh, contracts to, to get water shipped in, uh, to maintain those critical resources. But uh, we had a great relationship with the vendor for our water, and uh, which facilitated that getting here quickly during the, the freeze. And with these experiences under their belt, they say they are ready for this season. Lake Charles Memorial is more than prepared. We've been here for the community. We're going to continue to be here for the community, and uh, we're ready. At your service, Rania Cork, KPLC 7 News. Mental health is an issue that must be discussed after such devastation. Marcella Quadra spoke with one resident repairing his home and his peace of mind. 
I've never had any kind of major issues with my mental health growing up, but I feel like Hurricane Laura was the one that was kind of tipped the scales. After everything was said and done, we started doing cleanup, I started having anxiety attacks. Stress, anxiety, these are feelings residents in Southwest Louisiana have become all too familiar with. The tree was tall enough, it, it was rooted right there, and when it fell, it collapsed this part of the wall. As Hurricanes Laura and Delta destroyed homes and businesses, they also took their tolls on the mental health of those now tasked with rebuilding. For David Pirtle, the level of damage was overwhelming. If we can't get the house fixed soon, there's a chance either I might be homeless for a while or I will have nowhere to go. And that's when it struck his first ever anxiety attack. They had to call an ambulance because I didn't know what was going on. What I've seen, um, not only with clients, but also myself, is just an immense amount of stress, just it heightened stress, and, and it's almost like you just don't know what's next. Brent Woods, a licensed professional counselor, says one way to cope is by focusing on things that bring you joy and that are in your immediate control. Take a drive to Lafayette or Beaumont. You know, it's not as destroyed still, and so, you know, there is a little bit of normalcy to that. As for David, he started meditating using an app. Right, so you've been doing that every day? I try to. And how do you think it's helped you? It's definitely helped with my stress. And David says rebuilding his home is helping him feel better. Steady progress, and the better the house gets, the better I get. The better my family feels, the better I feel. I think the biggest thing for people that are struggling with this mindset or you know, dealing with a little bit of anxiety for the upcoming hurricane season is to realize that you know, we, we are resilient and we are in this together and just that support concept is really important. And if you do find yourself dealing with anxiety attacks, well, David has a message for you. Reach out, reach out. This is not something to fool with and I understand it's hard to go through. But please, reach out there. If you have family, talk to them. Just talking about it will raise a load off your chest. At your service, Marcelo Quadra, KPLC 7 News. We say it every year, but having a game plan is crucial before a storm approaches. Andrea Robinson has some tips and shares how one family prepared for last year's storms. And you know, as much as you don't want to say, get your stuff because it may not be here, it may not be there. The Walker family lost their home in Hurricane Laura. And we got a call from our neighbor, our neighbor where we were living, and the only thing she said was, you're going to have to get a new house. All that's left now is a pile of dirt in a mailbox. Luckily, they had another place to live. We're in real estate investing, and we had just purchased this home here in Moss Bluff. Uh, seven days prior to the hurricane. Their Moss Bluff property is serving as a Walker's temporary home, though they said lots of tears were shed for all that they lost. I lost it when I saw their rooms with no roof over it, but we were all safe. So in the end, uh, we're very blessed. When having to leave in a hurry, grab items that can't be replaced, like photos, scrapbooks, and family heirlooms. And don't forget important documents, too. For replaceable items in your home, take a walkthrough video that can later be used for insurance purposes. Which I told her she was crazy for doing, turned out not to be so crazy. Videoed everything in the home, took pictures of serial numbers of everything. And once you're packed up, then it's time to hit the road. We would not have evacuated the room we would have been in. Uh, beams fell from the ceiling and likely would have fell on us. After fleeing to Texas during Hurricane Laura, the Walker said how helpful it was to stock up on propane so that they could cook when they got back to the lake area when they were without power for weeks. We were able to eat, you know, beans and cooked the meat that we had that we knew was going to go bad. Allison says having a comfortable place to sleep at night was a priority in their planning. Um, air mattresses became our best friend for quite some time. <laughs> that is one thing I say get prior to. The Walker family is thankful they were prepared and evacuated when the storm approached because in the end they still have each other. It doesn't even matter about the rest. Uh, it was actually a bonding experience for us, the evacuation and um, 
I think it was it was actually fun if you look at the whole thing, even though it's not ideal when you lose your home. At your service, Andrea Robinson, KPLC 7 News. For more preparation tips, our seasonal outlook and recovery resources, we've got it all for you at kplctv.com. And while we all wish the hurricane season would stay quiet this year, we promise to be with you every step of the way through every storm. That's our commitment to you to always be at your service.